Hello, 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 and welcome to Press Any Button. I'm Nikki. I'm Eric. But Nikki, there is a murderer on the loose. A murderer is on the loose? And we need to figure out which one of these Sonic characters is, in fact, a murderer. (gasps) Bum, bum, bum. Which Sonic characters are there to choose from? (laughs) All of them. All of them? Okay. Okay, maybe not all of them, but certainly a handful. (laughs) A handful. All right. Yeah, we're going to be talking about the murder of Sonic the Hedgehog. The game. Not Sonic the Restaurant. Not (laughs) any other Sonic you might know. The murder of Sonic the Hedgehog. I can't believe that Sega actually decided to kill off Sonic. He's kind of a major character. I know. Nintendo would never... Do that to Mario. Sega do, Nintendo don't. I feel like the the console wars are officially over. Mario just hit a big at the box office. Sonic is dead. <laughs> yeah. Peak. What else could happen? This is like the ultimate victory for Nintendo. <laughs> <laughs> for those of you who haven't heard, The Murder of Sonic the Hedgehog is a point-and-click visual novel developed by sega social team and published by sega for mac os and windows in the game you investigate sonic's apparent murder on amy rose's birthday bum, bum, bum. the game was released as freeware on march 31st 2023 to coincide with april fool's day what this is a, this is all a joke to them? Yeah, this is all a joke. <laughs> you mean Sonic's not really dead? <laughs> Maybe? I don't know. Spoiler warning. We will say who murdered <laughs> Sonic the Hedgehog in this episode. Probably discuss the story. So if you want to play the game yourself before you listen, it literally takes about two hours to play. It's very short. So go play it and come back. Yeah. All right, cool. Well, Eric, you ready to get into it? Yeah, let's do it. Let's put our mystery solvent hats on. Gotta solve fast. some sweet sweet history for me i do it's gonna be a little short because there's not a whole lot on this game out there but there is a (laughs) little bit all right you know what happens sometimes yeah it's fine especially with the new games yeah and this is like brand new so Mm -hmm. there's actually more than i thought whoa (laughs) so let's go surprise so almost all sonic titles are developed by a division of sega called sonic team okay this game was not Yes, this game was the social Sega? Yes, it was developed by Sega's social team. Okay. Which is like a, the people who do their social media and stuff or I assume so. Okay. <laughs> it's a pretty good guess, I think. <laughs> it's as good as any any of the guesses I have. All right. There were a couple members of the development team that had previous game development experience. Uh, the game designer Greg Botha was one of the developers of Dream Daddy which is a gay dad dating simulator. <laughs> nice. And art director Ellen Alsop had worked on a yet-to-be-released game called Goodbye Volcano High. <laughs> um, have Some you... very random games. <laughs> so I take it you've never played either of them? Um, yeah, I've totally played that gay dad dating simulator game. I mean, it sounds like it'd be on our list at some point to play. <laughs> it might be, um, now that I know about it. But yeah, I haven't uh, played either of them either. So the idea for the game was born at the premiere of the 2020 Sonic the Hedgehog film. Uh, what? Ba- yeah. So basically, uh, Botha was talking to Katie Krasowski and Justin Thorman of Sega's social media team. The two then helped push the concept to Sonic stewards at Sega. Okay. So, yeah. So basically, they had the idea for it after seeing Sonic <laughs> the movie. Huh. Okay. <laughs> I don't see the connection, but... To kill Sonic? Yeah, from the movie. I mean, he almost dies in the movie, right? Doesn't he? Isn't he almost like always almost dying? It's Sonic. He's always yeah. in danger <laughs> for some reason for a little hedgehog. Everybody wants to kill him. 
I think uh, I think the the joke probably would have been like, oh, he's at he's at such a peak right now. Wouldn't it be funny if we just killed him <laughs> off? <laughs> yeah, that would be okay. I get it. I can see it. I can see it. So according to Greg, uh, they basically started with the headline they wanted, which was Sonic is dead, and used that as a jumping off point to design the game with the intention of releasing it on April Fool's Day. Yeah. So of they, course they wanted. Yeah, they just wanted the headline Sonic is dead, basically. So I wonder how many people thought it was a joke and then didn't go look up the game and has never played it. <laughs> I mean, probably <laughs> to this day. quite a few. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the game does seem like it probably is a joke, but the fact that it's a real game is pretty amazing. Okay, so the main inspirations for gameplay were uh, the Ace Attorney series uh, for the interrogations and the murder mystery chapter from Paper Mario: The Thousand Year Door. Are you familiar with either of those? No, never played either of those. Uh, I played some of never the... Never even heard of them, actually. I played some of the Ace Attorney games, the Phoenix Wright, like attorney at law type of thing. Uh-huh. And those games are pretty fun. They are like visual novels, but you're definitely like collecting evidence and interrogating people and stuff like that. Okay. And you have these very over-the-top like court ca- court <laughs> scenes. <laughs> Sounds kind of fun, actually. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's a lot of fun. Because I used to do mock trial and stuff back in high school, so that's like right up my alley <laughs> yeah it's uh if you've never played an ace attorney game they're uh they're a lot of fun was it on sega i think they're on several different uh the ace attorney uh-huh uh, i think they're on several different consoles the one i played was on the uh, nintendo ds back in the day okay cool so after the team decided they wanted sonic dead they spent about a year or two developing the game in complete and total secrecy. Ooh. Uh, the team members would work on the game alongside their usual day jobs. <laughs> what? So I guess when they had some downtime, they'd kind of like work on the game a bit. Yeah. Yeah. So like the social media team is working with the game development team, basically? No, they're on their own. The social, the social media team's on their own? Yeah. Well, I, I assume they're on their own. Like I said, so a couple of the people on the social media team had game design experience. Oh, and okay. I think that's kind of what uh, facilitated it. That's cool. Yeah. That sounds exciting. Get to work on something a little different and something you have to keep top secret. Yeah. I don't know if I could keep it a secret. <laughs> <laughs> I'd have to at least tell you, and then you'd have to keep it a secret too. Ooh, I don't know if I no, You wouldn't have telling Michael. Not, you'd tell the band. Not a big headline like <laughs> Sonic is dead. I mean. <laughs> okay, so what do you think the overall theme of the game is? <laughs> have fun. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you always say. Yeah, it is. Uh, um, th- thematically, what what do you think? Like thematically, like everything had in common. Like. Um. I don't know. It was very true to like all the Sonic stories so far <laughs> that I know of. Okay, I guess you didn't catch the main theme, which was uh, friendship. <laughs> oh yeah, friendship. Of course, they're at a friend's birthday party. Yeah, and they're all hanging out. Yeah. Yeah. So according to Greg, friends support each other and lift each other up, and they help them uh, be the best person they can be. In this game, you see a Aww, lot of people. Oh, Greg. <laughs> in, the, in this game, you see a lot of people looking out for each other and pointing out. The strengths uh, of each other while covering for each other's weaknesses. That's very true. Yeah. I didn't know that that would be considered an overall theme for this game. But I can see it now. Yeah. I, that's kind of what I thought when I read that. I was like, oh, I, I guess I can't see friendship being the main theme of this game. <laughs> and so, yeah, the murder of Sonic uh, the Hedgehog has generally received positive reviews and was downloaded over a million times what? within a week of its release. A million times? Well, you know, Holy it's, crap. It's free. <laughs> I know, but that's still a lot. I mean, <laughs> Yeah, that it's is hard true. to get people to do stuff, you know? Yeah, like, I would I would say that's a pretty like big success for their social media team. Yeah. Especially considering the low budget they developed the game on to have it like blow up that that big and have it be such a big thing. It's yeah, that's pretty, pretty cool. Pretty impressive, I think. Uh, that's pretty much all my history. Kind of short. Wow, yeah. But, uh, but it took two years to make this game. Uh, it took a year to two years. Yeah. Uh, I, I basically... And imagine if they had an actual video game team working on this. It probably would have only taken like a few months. Because like... Yeah, I mean, they were working on it basically in their downtime. Yeah. While they're doing their regular jobs and stuff, so... Because it's not a very like complex game no. or anything yeah. <laughs> so you ready for some fun facts oh yeah always 
Ready for some fun facts. Let's start at the end with the credits. The creators of the game put their uh, pets in the uh, in the credits. Yeah, they had like a whole section in the credits that was like special thank you. Yeah, I, to our pets. And I want to read some of those now. Oh my gosh! So <laughs> there's uh, Big the Cat, the dog. Big the Cat, the dog. Yeah. Oh my gosh, that's confusing. <laughs> uh, Sunshine, uh, Jacques Catu, Toodles, Lolly, Panda, and the stray cats outside Justin's house. <laughs> Thanks, Stray Cats. Yeah, I thought that was kind of like a nice touch. Yeah, I think I told you about that because I thought it was so cute. Yeah. <laughs> if I ever make a game, I'm definitely thinking Dr. Doom. <laughs> you kind of have to, I think. <laughs> okay, so fun fact number two. Ooh. While the game lets you name the main protagonist, uh, the waiter, party <laughs> overseer guy, uh -huh. the team internally refers to him as Barry the Quoka. Barry the what? Quoka. What's that? You don't know what a quokka is? No. Do you know what a quokka is? Yeah, it's like a mammal. Is it? I've never heard of it so, before. The guy. Oh, it's so cute. It's so cute. It's like a mix of like a raccoon and koala bear or something. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's cute though. Yeah, it looks like a made up animal. It's like ridiculous. It looks like <laughs> a made up animal. <laughs> It really does. Honestly, that's like most animals, if you really think about it. <laughs> Nature's weird. All right. So fun fact number three. So we both discovered the game's profanity filter, right? Yeah. Which is I tried to make my original name Tits McGee, and it was like, no, no, no. <laughs> I tried to make my character's name Barf, and it was like, no, no, no. Wow. Yeah. I think I got away with something much worse, though, actually. <laughs> So what was your name that you ended up going with? So yeah, it filtered barf, but it didn't filter puke, which yeah. I feel like is backwards. I feel like barf is like the less worse version of puke. You think so? Yeah. I don't know. They're like, both barf is pretty more, much the same to me. Barf is more of the action and puke is more of the result <laughs> of the action. <laughs> no, I don't know. They're pretty much the same to me. You think so? Yeah. I don't know. I think puke is worse. <laughs> but yeah, puke is totally fine according to this game. Barf, no. No. <laughs> well, Tits McGee, not fine. <laughs> what? But Tig Old Biddies, totally fine. <laughs> <laughs> so anytime the characters refer to me, it was so hilarious. They're like, hey, Tig Old Biddies, let's go check out this. <laughs> Da, 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 da. <laughs> it's like, take all bitties. You're sweating through your uniform <laughs> and all this stuff. And I was like, yes, boob sweat. That's a real issue that I do have to deal with. <laughs> it's not addressed enough in most other podcasts. <laughs> boob sweat. I don't know. I just was like, I really should have maybe did a better job of having more words or just had none at all. <laughs> I feel like one of the best part of naming your characters is getting to have put it into situations like where you get sentences that are like that. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. The game also won't allow you to use any in-game character names. Uh, like you can't oh. name your character Sonic for some reason. So, Cause that'd be confusing. It'd be two Sonics, <laughs> but could you be like Sonic two or something or Sonic yeah, B? I, I was going to say <laughs> like you couldn't use the name Amy, but you could use the full name Amy Rose. Oh yeah. Interesting. So yeah, that's it's kind of weird, but also I don't. Amy Rose. That just sounds like a name of like a lady that would like marry an old man for money or something. I don't know. <laughs> Is yeah, it not? Yeah, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So fun fact number four. Dang, you found a lot of fun facts, babe. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> so the game's development name is Choo Choo Boo Boo. <laughs> <laughs> which can be found in the code so what well i mean they were trying to keep it a secret so uh, that's funny because it does have a train in it <laughs> so it's like choo choo yeah for the train oh no, yeah i got it yeah and then you know sonic gets murdered boo boo, boo, -boo. <laughs> yeah <laughs> i love it all right so then my final fun fact fun fact number five you remember there are two characters waiting with Dr. Robotnik for the train to arrive wearing Let's Go Dad t-shirts. Yeah, one of them looked like Sonic, and the other one looked like... I can't remember. What did the other one look like? Uh, like a girl. Oh, okay. <laughs> so those 
characters are Metal Sonic and Sage, who are both built by Dr. Robotnik. Sage's first appearance was in the recently released Sonic Frontiers, and Metal Sonic goes all the way back to Sonic CD, which came out for the Sega CD. So that when was his was that? first. That was back in the, man, I want to say. Early 2000s. Late 90s. So yeah, those are both basically robots built by Dr. Robot. Yeah, I was wondering who they work. So I was like, wait, he has kids. <laughs> well, I mean, they kind of are his kids in a way. Yeah, because he built they're them. his creations. Yeah, maybe that's a better way. Yeah. It, but that's, <laughs> that's what's uh, with the uh, Let's Go Dad t-shirts. That's hilarious. So he secretly wants to be Sonic's daddy. <laughs> that's my impression from that scene. <laughs> and that's, yeah, that's all my fun facts. Wow, good job. Thanks. That's like actually a pretty good amount of info. Yeah, I think so. For just like a two hour long game. <laughs> <laughs> there was a little bit more than I thought there would be. Cool. So Eric, do you want to go over the story part now? Yeah, let's go over the story. And this is where all the spoilers are. So if you didn't take our spoiler warning earlier, <laughs> this is for sure the time you want to stop listening. Go play the game and come back. Okay, so the basic premise is it's Amy's birthday. So she plans a murder mystery train ride. Ooh, that sounds fun. Yeah, all her friends are playing characters and wearing costumes for the game. And you've got, like, what characters there? Uh, SBO. Yeah, Knuckles. Knuckles, Shadow. Blaze. Tails. What's the uh, alligator guy? Vector. Vector. Yeah, and he's Shadow. cool. That's pretty much everyone. Yeah, right? and Sonic's there, too. Eh, you know, <laughs> the least important one. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, they're all wearing costumes. Sonic's got his, like, little captain's hat mm -hmm. <laughs> or conductor's hat, I guess. Yeah, and, like, Shadow, isn't he, like, a cowboy or something? No, Knuckles is, like, the cowboy. Knuckles is the cowboy. They, Shadow... They, got, they look kind of similar, so it's kind of like... <laughs> no, <that>. they don't. <laughs> Shadow is the locksmith. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so many different characters, though. So you play as a self-named train employee overseeing the party. We already kind of said his name was Barry, but, you know, I named him Puke. <laughs> I named mine Tiggle Babies. <laughs> uh, totally legit names that would happen in real life. <laughs> you're basically there to make sure everything goes well, but you end up getting involved in the murder mystery game as well. Yep, you get sucked in. Yeah, so you're like... You're supposed to be taking people's orders and preparing their food, but no one really orders food at any point. Yeah, true. So you don't get to do that aspect of the game. <laughs> it was pretty much just microwaving stuff anyway. So, you know. Yeah. So they really I, should have had better food on board. I feel like they probably should have had better food. Yeah. <laughs> so after lights go out type of moment, you find Sonic dead, <gasps> which everyone assumes he's just play acting for the game. Mm -hmm. uh, you then go train car by train car gathering evidence and interrogating passengers. Yes. Many, many interrogations. Yeah. And, and a lot of evidence to be collected. Yeah. And then who ended up murdering Sonic, Nikki? All right. So here's the tricky part. There is a twist because there's a murderer within the game. So someone that they kind of, you know, that's a part of the birthday party thing. Yeah. But then you have a second murderer who's trying to murder Sonic in real life. Really? The train the itself. Train. So you've got two murderers, kind of. Yeah, so the the person who is the murderer in the game is Espio. And as it turns out, he is tricked into using a knockout dart on Sonic. Not not a poison dart to <laughs> knock out dart. Yeah. So a blow he, dart. So he's just asleep. Everyone can calm down. But yeah, then it, it's revealed that the train itself is a bad Nick built by Dr. Robotnik for the sole purpose of capturing Sonic, even though it had been used as a regular train for 30 something years. Yeah. yeah. He was just, <laughs> just waiting. very much prepared in advance for this one moment. <laughs> just waiting for the off chance that Sonic decides not to run somewhere and take the train. Yeah. And go to a murder mystery party. Yeah. And be the one that's getting murdered. <laughs> He's really counting on a lot of specific things. <laughs> he to really happen. did wait for a lot of specific things to come together <laughs> He's for this plan. He's not the brightest crayon in the box, is he? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so after it's revealed it's the train, the train kind of captures everyone and locks them in these different carts. Yeah, so you have this big evil, like, iRobot moment, you know, and the yeah. train ends up being evil and. 
you know, he wants to murder everyone, really. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, after that, Sonic wakes up from the blow dart. Then he kind of rests. He frees everybody, and then everyone works together to destroy the train. Mm-hmm. And that's Teamwork. The, yeah, that's the game. Oh, yeah, there's friendship. And friendship and teamwork. Friendship Save and teamwork. Save the day. <laughs> and so, yeah, that's the story. And uh, you ready to get into the pros? Yeah. So this game is really funny, actually. Yeah. There's a lot of jokes, <laughs> a lot of silliness. I feel like they, like, all the characters are exactly what you know the characters for. They didn't just, like, randomly change anyone's, like, personality or anything. <laughs> yeah, I feel like the characters are all very well defined and very much themselves. Yeah. Yeah. I like Rouge. <laughs> uh, she's probably my favorite because she's like a kleptomaniac. And she's literally stealing from everyone on the train, even her own friends. And they're just like, ha, ha, ha. Give me my $20 back, you silly. It's like, <laughs> no. Yeah, it's not cool. It's like, yeah, that's not cool. Chica. <laughs> yeah, I especially, I like the humor a lot, too. It's like really funny. I especially like the uh, Fabergé egg heist yeah yeah there's like a side heist that you have to do <laughs> yeah it's well like you don't have rouge to decides do it. well you probably do have to do it but. yeah she decides she wants to steal this faberge egg like randomly that's on the train and you have to help her come up with a plan to steal it mm-hmm. at she what turns point you over to the evil side <laughs> yeah I don't, I don't know why everyone decides to help her with this but everyone's cool with stealing stuff in yeah, this game i guess murder bad stealing things fine but at one point, there's like, uh, like the the egg starts ticking, so everyone thinks it's a bomb, mm-hmm. and there's like twenty different options that pops up on screen. Yeah, it's like any other time you might get like two, three options of something yeah. to pick. For this one, you have a screen of literally like twenty options, and you're like, most of them are really stupid. <laughs> like, it's like, okay, how are you gonna work? How are you gonna stop this egg? Because you think it's a bomb. Yeah. Uh, one of the options is stomp on it. Yeah, that seems like a great <laughs> idea. Another one, throw it into the wall. Uh, another one, turn it the other way. <laughs> you know, it's like <laughs> it was like one that was like eat it. <laughs> and I I clicked on every single one of them before I got to the right option, which was which was wait and see what happens <laughs> yeah it's funny because i clicked uh, like i didn't get to click on any of the other ones so i don't even remember what the other options were i was like oh this is gonna be funny and then i click on the first option and that was the correct option i was kind of like oh man <laughs> yeah i read through all of them and yeah i i was like okay at first i was like oh this one might be it that one sounds like it would work and then after that i was like well none of these make sense <laughs> so i don't even know what to pick i just picked all of them and of course, the the last one I picked was the right one. <laughs> yeah. So one of the things I liked was the fact that it's, you know, it's very short. Oh, yeah. I appreciate short games. Uh, you can play this in just one sitting if you wanted to. Oh, yeah, definitely. And, man, I bet a speed run of this game would be really fast. Oh, my gosh, yeah. It would pretty much just be all clicking, though. <laughs> yeah, you wouldn't have time to read anything if you're trying to speed run it. But if you're speed running, you probably already read everything so yeah it wouldn't matter i bet they could speed run this game in like 10 minutes maybe <laughs> I don't maybe know. anyway no i think you're right it probably wouldn't be that long i like the fun mix of platforming and murder mystery or like visual novel because there's parts where the game will cut to a platforming mini game yeah so that you can think of the answer or whatever <laughs> And if you fail the level, then it's like, oh, you couldn't think of the idea. <laughs> well, it just starts over. You just do it again. Well, right? yeah, so you just start over. But um, I think that's pretty fun like to have that as an element of the Sonic visual novel because that is what you know Sonic for, yeah. running and collecting rings. <laughs> yeah, I like that little mini game too. It kind of reminds me of some of the mini games they used to have in the original Sonic games. Yeah. Uh, yeah, just something short, simple, uh, and fun to break up the game a little bit. So it's yeah. just not all visual novel. Yeah, something to get your adrenaline up a little bit. Yeah, get a little excited. bit, a little bit of Sonic action going yeah. on. Yeah, gotta go fast. Can't have a Sonic game without being able to go fast at least a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I like the fact that it was free. You know, no microtransactions, no ads. 
it's always cool when a company does something like this at a loss to make the fans happy. Yeah. Because, yeah, yeah they definitely didn't. Just for April Fool's Day. Yeah, just, <laughs> just for publicity, just to remind people, hey, Sonic's still a thing. Yeah, as if we could forget. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I had that too. Like, usually when a game is free, it's not very good a lot of times. So it's nice to know. That if Sonic's going to put out, or if Sega's going to put out, like, a free Sonic game, then it's probably going to be good. So yeah. in the future, if I see another free Sonic game, I'd probably play it. In the future, I want a point-and-click adventure Sonic game. <laughs> <laughs> I want a Sonic dating sim game. Ooh, there we go. <laughs> uh, I also really like the music in this game. It's really nice. Like, yeah, I like that just, title you know, your music. classic, like, Sonic vibes. Music, but well done. Yeah, gets for you in, a short game. Gets you in the mood for solving mysteries. Yeah, and then you have the music during the mini games and stuff too. So that's always fun. Yeah. Anything else? Uh, that's all I got for the pros. Do you have any cons? <laughs> yeah, I have a few. Okay. So yeah, this game is really more of a visual novel than a point-and-click adventure game. Yeah. And you're pretty much just on a straight linear track going room by room until the end of the game much like a train itself yeah exactly <laughs> um it would have been nice if they had like included some exploration where you could kind of like move back and forth between the cars and yeah. explore yourself yeah and then maybe if there's like a few different branch offs you know like yeah. a few different things where your choices actually made a difference i feel like none of your like answers really made that big of a difference <laughs> yeah and if you get something wrong they just ask you again basically yeah yeah exactly yeah i would have <laughs> it would have been good to see a bad ending in this game yeah but you know it's free and they were just kind of doing it for fun so yeah i can't that. really expect <laughs> too much more yeah i mean the cons definitely are more like more just like i would like this idea expanded upon yeah type of thing I don't even have any cons, so. Oh, uh, okay. I mean, it's only two hours long. I I don't know. I don't have really have any complaints. Well, I have a couple more. Okay. <laughs> There's a part of the story that really bothers me uh -oh. because of how little sense it makes. Oh, God. And that's the knockout dart. Okay. So, first of all, why wouldn't you have enough of the drug on the dart so that it would at least last the entire train ride to your secret <laughs> base? Okay, we've already established. <laughs> Dr. Eggman is not the brightest crown in the box, okay? He's like one of those spoof villains that you would see in like an Austin Powers movie or he's, something. He's smart enough to build these like advanced robotics, but yeah, I don't know. That's how it is. You know, a lot of these geniuses, they can do very complex things, but when it comes to street smarts or common sense, <laughs> there is none. This is a good example. See, common sense would be, hey, put enough drug on there to keep him knocked out for a day or something. Yeah, at least the entire... not Dr. Eggman. He's like, no, about 10 minutes is good. <laughs> at least the entire train ride to your secret base. <laughs> uh, and then the other, uh, the other point is just put the poison on the dart, and that way Sonic is actually dead. <laughs> All right. Sega, if you're looking for a new villain... We've got Dr. Eric over here. He's ready to take over. I'm just saying. He knows how to really kill Sonic. If you're going to the trouble of knocking him out with a dart, you could just make it a poison dart. Mm -hmm. But it's like you have that classic evil villain cliche where they need to put the good guy in an easily escapable situation. Exactly. And it's funny. It's like they lock everyone up and then Sonic just spin dashes through the doors. It's like, okay, <laughs> yeah, that wasn't really that difficult. <laughs> Okay. Any other complaints? Yeah. <laughs> You're very critical of this game. We already talked about the fact that there's only one ending. Um, and the last one is barf is not a bad word. I'm <laughs> extremely offended that the game would censor it, but still allow puke. Yeah, which it makes is no sense. way worse in my opinion. Puke is a much worse word. Um, they're barf. pretty equal to me. Like, not if you're equal. listening, which, which, what do you think is worse? Barf or puke? Puke. Or are they equal? They're not equal. <laughs> <laughs> so, Nikki, we're not to the challenge yet, but the whole point of your challenge was to solve the murder. Mm-hmm. And on your first guess. <laughs> you 
did not say first guess. I'm pretty sure I said first guess. No, you said find out who murdered Sonic. So that I, was it. I want to. That first guess was really important. <laughs> I want to know what your logic behind the first guess Look, was. My first guess. I thought it was gonna be Shadow. Okay, and it wasn't. <laughs> Uh, I do, mean, I, do I know why I picked him? Not really, because <laughs> I don't know. I wasn't paying that much attention. So I should have paid more attention. <laughs> Man, I should have had you do it on your first guess. But, oh yeah, too but, bad. So sad. You did not do that. So, so what made you pick? You can't really remember what made you pick Shadow. Um, he just seemed he seemed guilty. <laughs> he seemed guilty. You know, he didn't get the present right. Am I yeah, him? yeah. He, he forgot the present, but he was. Mm. There was evidence that he tried to get something yeah, at the last minute. Tried, <laughs> but didn't. I don't know. And then Amy Rose ended up buying him concert tickets, and it's her birthday. Not cool. Not cool. <laughs> I don't. And remember, he just let her. I don't remember Amy buying. The... Yeah, she was sad because she accused him. Remember of. And then she found mm. out it wasn't him, and she was like, "Oh, to make it up to you, I'll buy tickets to this, this concert." I thought she was like, "I'll buy, I'll buy tickets to the next show." Well, oh yeah, to the next show, but she still ended up buying the tickets. She did. He didn't buy it. He couldn't buy them. He got there too late. We'll have to fact check this. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, he seemed very guilty, and his um, name's Shadow. That's to me guilty. To me, he seemed like a clear red herring. Like he, he nah. seemed like a super obvious red herring. <sighs> yeah. So I went train by train, and I kind of like in my mm -hmm. head I eliminated each, each did of the people. You? I think it like yeah. So, so did you guess Espio first? I did, yeah. First, my first try, guess, yeah. Why? What made you think that? So yeah, uh, so basically, like <laughs> every single character had both physical evidence and testimonial evidence. Uh huh. Whereas Espio really kind of had neither. Okay, that's true. It was kind of tough because I had it between Blaze and Espio. Okay. Like Blaze was another good one because she had very little, like her physical evidence was like her receipt at the uh, slot machine mm -hmm. or at the casino, her winnings or whatever. And the fact that uh, Shadow handed her a key to the door. Yeah, both those things don't take very long. Yeah, and then the only thing really that placed Espio in the library car was the fact that he had memorized a book. Yeah. Uh, which you interview him about. But then, like, when you're talking to him, like... Well, and where he was sitting, it was like, you know, well, it could have not been been seen Yeah, in it, the spot he was at. There was circumstantial evidence that Shadow yeah, might not have seen him when he, when he passed through. But, again, there was nothing really placing him there other than the fact that he read the book. Yeah. So my thought process true. was like the lack of physical evidence placing him in the library car mm -hmm. and also the lack of testimonial evidence of anyone really interacting with him. Wow. He's really thought about it a lot more than me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, I had to break down all the characters, but I guess we don't have time for that. <laughs> yeah. We, we don't have, so you had like a whole cork board with like string. <laughs> And like highlighter and like pictures pinned up and you had it all figured out. I thought about it. Detective for, Eric. For, I thought about it for five minutes. <laughs> that's what you mean. Yeah. Detective Eric on the case. <laughs> yeah. And like I said, Shadow was clearly the red herring. He was. Clear, clearly. I mean. For you. There was so much physical evidence. He was in other places though. Like he had his highest score on the arcade machine. Crumpled up. Concert tickets yeah, he had the, or the of, page. of him trying to print out the con. He was just too yeah. busy. He was locking the car doors. He was printing out concert tickets. Okay, okay. He was uh, playing the arcade cabinet. Like, there's just, there's just too much stuff going on with all Shadow. All right, all right. Whatever. <laughs> all right. That's probably enough for strategy, I think. <laughs> yeah, that was, yeah. That really wasn't even strategy, really. Yeah, it was. P picking the, I feel like that was the main uh, <laughs> strategy. Pick the right murderer. <laughs> That was the whole main point of like ninety percent of the game was to pick the right person yeah. to figure it out to solve the mystery. Yeah, I mean it's called. I guess the... strategy. Look at the evidence. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty much what you're saying. Yeah, you know, <laughs> to think about the evidence. Do what you do in a murder mystery game. <laughs> yeah, try to actually solve the murder mystery yeah. part. So I don't obvious. know. Yeah, the the problem is that whoever you guess, there's no like, there's no penalty for picking the wrong answer. Basically. Yeah. Whoever you guess, they basically tell you, like, no, that, that wasn't it. Like, guess again. Yeah, that's why I didn't really get too stressed out about it. There definitely needed to be some stakes there. 
yeah, I probably would have tried a little bit harder. <laughs> Man, but I was here for the story, okay? I was here for the story. Tried a little, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's still fun. I had a good time. All right, let's move on. Uh, future stuff. So you're just gonna do all Sonic the Hedgehog stuff for so, future, right? Obviously, I think this game is likely gonna be a one-off, but you never know. Yeah, but I mean, next April Fool's Day, they'll do a follow-up <laughs> game. Murder of Sonic the Hedgehog 2. Yeah, or a murder of Tails or something. This time is for real. <laughs> <laughs> so I just have stuff for um, Sonic in general. Yeah. We all know there's going to be another movie. Yeah, Sonic 3 release date is currently December 20th, 2024. Um, okay, but that could, so we still have a year and a half. Basically. Yeah, that could always get pushed back. Yeah, dang, taking forever to get that third movie out. Yeah, and you know Jim Carrey isn't gonna come back as Doctor Robotnik, I, I don't think. Okay. Unless it's a surprise or something. Yeah, no, I think I heard that he was gonna retire too. Yeah. But in the games, doesn't Doctor Eggman look? Doesn't he have like, some different looks? Like, so if they change the actor, is it gonna be that weird? Hmm. I feel like I eh. think I've only played like two Sonic games, so. Yeah, I mean, um, you know, Eggman is a lot rounder in mm -hmm. Sonic games. He kind of looks more like an egg. Yeah. Egg-shaped. Yeah. I feel like Jim Carrey's character was slowly going that path. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, first the first movie is thin with a full head of hair. Second movie is bald with a crazy mustache, more like uh, Dr. Eggman actually looks in the game. Yeah. And by the third movie, I assume he was going to have that more of that shape, mm -hmm. that body shape. But yeah, I don't know what they'll do if they'll bring him back. Or, a uh, actor. or just uh, have a different antagonist. Hmm. Because they hinted at the end of the second one that, you know, Shadow was going to be in it. Yeah. So, yeah, it just might be, be cool. uh, the main antagonist being Shadow. Yeah. I mean, I've liked both of the movies so far. There's a good time. Very funny. So yeah. I'm excited about the next movie. I'm excited too. But in the meantime, <laughs> did you hear about the fact that there is a live action knuckle series coming to Paramount Plus? I did hear about that. Uh, and I do have Paramount Plus, so if you want to check it out, that could be something we watch together. Do you know when that's coming out? I couldn't find a specific date, but it's supposed to be released sometime this year. Okay. So. Cool. Yeah. Paramount Plus is doing some fun things, so we'll see how it goes. And then the only other thing is, like, their most recent game is Sonic Frontiers, which came out in 2022. That was an actual Team Sonic developed game as mm -hmm. opposed to this one, which is yeah, a yeah. social media team uh -huh. uh, developed game. Or I said social media team, social team. And I heard mixed reviews on the game. like Sonic Frontiers? Yeah. Yeah, I haven't had a chance to play it yet. But, yeah, it's. I think it's done pretty okay as far as the reviews go. Mm -hmm. Like middle high. Middle high, yeah. I kind of saw some iffy ones and some good ones, so it kind of looked like it was just like, yeah, whether, depending on who's playing it, I guess. Yeah, whether the game's to your taste. I kind of have yeah. mixed feelings about open world games in general. Mm -hmm. My uh, my negative for open world games is that sometimes they tend to make the worlds a little bit too big and like not enough stuff going on where it would really have like been to their benefit to condense. Yeah. And I feel like I usually end up getting a little bit too overwhelmed just with all the empty space and like where to go and all that stuff. Yeah, that makes sense. But I don't know. It, it, an open world game can work for sure. It just has to be done right. Mm -hmm. Anyway, okay. So moving on to the challenge. <laughs> Nikki, did you figure out who murdered Sonic? Obviously. Yeah. Because I'm the number one detective. <laughs> Maybe not your first <laughs> guess, but probably your second guess, Yeah, right? definitely the second guess, for sure. You got on the second try? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I did. Okay. I, I was kind of trying, just not... I wasn't that stressed out about it, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> this, is not a, this is not a game to get stressed out I about. Gotcha. It. <laughs> I'm not stressing out, falling for that super obvious red herring. Mm -hmm. It's okay. I survived. We all survived. Everyone survives. <laughs> Except for Sonic. Yeah, you, sh you should have said you have to get on your first try. I would have been a lot more stressed out about it. Yeah. Or I would have just lied to you. Because <laughs> you don't know. <laughs> That's true. You can't check. <laughs> New game. Nikki. Go oh, for Eric. it. As you can see, what do I have right here in my hand? You have a Game Boy Color. I do. I have a Game Boy Color. Did you sneak a peek at what game was in the Game Boy Color yet? <laughs> I thought about it, but I did not. <laughs> oh, I refrained. Good job. 
So you have any ideas what game that I'm going to pick? So like, we haven't really done... Have we done a Game Boy game yet? No. I don't think we have. So I wanted to pick a Game Boy game. And I know you're going to be out of town for half the two weeks. So I had to pick something you could play on the go. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> so what game do you think I picked? Is this a game that you had played before? Or that you have played before? Kind of. Like... Did you did you used to own it on Game Boy? Yes. Okay. Is it Tetris? No. Is it Link's Awakening? It is. The Legend of Zelda: Link's Awakening. Okay. Yeah. There we go. For Game Boy, I have the Game Boy game, but it works in the Game Boy Color, so that's cool. Because <laughs> yeah. I don't think I have an original Game Boy. Nice. I also have it on um, that little. Oh, that little other handheld. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. And then we also have it on, they just put it on Switch for the Game Boy Online catalog. It's the Game Boy Color version, though, so I think it might have, like, one extra dungeon that uh, okay. this that the original one doesn't have or something like that. But So which one should we play? So uh, I want to do this original one for the Game Boy, but we can do the Switch one, too, if because we, we're going to have to split up at some point because you're going to be out of town. So Okay. I guess we'll just mostly talk about the original one, but if one of us has to play the one for Game Boy Color, then that's okay, I think. Oh, yeah. So the reason I picked this is because I did have it as a kid, and I was just like too young and dumb for this game. I remember playing it, and I got so confused early on, and I didn't know what to do next, and I just was like, this is dumb, and I quit. <laughs> I didn't really have any anyone that played games, so I didn't really ha know. I didn't really have anyone ask or yeah. anything like that. And the internet wasn't really a thing. Yeah, and like to me, this game is not. I don't know. It's not that straightforward. It's not. Yeah. So, I just didn't have the capacity for it when I was a kid, and I gave up very easily. So I'm want to do an experiment where I see if I can play this game now. <laughs> <laughs> that I've played a whole bunch of other games, you know. Now that I'm more well versed with games and I kind of know more about what's going on, I want to see if I can actually play it or if I'm still super dumb. <laughs> <laughs> but I know you played this game uh, several times, right? Yeah, I, I had it as a kid for Game Boy Color. I had a Game Boy Color one. Yeah, is this one that you do that weird? Um, what is it called? Where you do the emulator and it like, oh, the randomizer challenge? No. Where you have your like, random checklist? No, I do you... uh, Ocarina of Time with that. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, you could, actually, there's probably a randomized version of this game out there. Yeah, a randomizer <laughs> for this game. Yeah, because you play, I don't know, you play a lot of Zelda games. So I did get help to come up with this challenge. Okay. So <laughs> I messaged our friend John Cardinal <laughs> and I was like hey have you played <laughs> The Legend of Zelda Wicks Awakening <laughs> like I didn't know the answer to that already <laughs> he was like yeah of course <laughs> I played a bunch when I was a kid so I was like okay I need your help coming up with a challenge for Eric because I didn't play the game enough to like know what a challenge would be except for beat the game or something yeah. and that's too easy for you right yeah, yeah of course Way, so, too, way too easy. I was like, John, give me something kind of hard. <laughs> God. So your challenge is find enough hidden seashells to unlock the sword oh, in the game. God, the seashells. I remember the seashells. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that sounds kind of hard. Yeah. A little hard. There are a shitload of them, I think. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that's your challenge. I looked it up. You can beat this whole game in like 15 hours. So hopefully you'll have plenty of time to work on finding seashells, I guess. <laughs> cool. All, All right. right. Are you excited? Yeah. Let's play it. Yeah. It'll be All fun. right. Doing a classic. All right. Well, we'll see everybody next time. All right. Bye. Bye.
And as always, if you like our episode, please leave us a comment, send us a message. We have a website now, pressanybutton.net. And also, this is really important. Let us know what you think is worse, barf or puke, or are they equal? We gotta know. See you next time. Bye.